with this video we will be doing Bazino lies and says that he broke 97 percent of rap elvis if you want to help this channel and the content that we make and please help support our merchandise the link is in the description if you didn't hit the like button make sure you hit the like button try and get the channel to grow and the only way we're going to do this if you like share and comment on the content so without further ado let's get into the video let's go Chi Chi, get the Yale. Get the Yale. Turn off the dialogue. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Why don't Eminem? See, no. huh. Why don't Eminem do interviews? Why isn't Eminem held to a standard of every other thousands of artists? Why Why won't Eminem come talk to the to the black people of hip hop? What What, what is this? Let me ask you that too. Why won't he? do interviews. Hip hop is supposed to be outside and supposed to be uh, outside. It's supposed to be, you know, why won't he interact with people? Why won't he do interviews? Um, he don't do interviews because he don't want to do interviews. A lot of people don't do interviews. J. Cole don't really do interviews. It's just like some people like keeping the mystique to him right. without doing interviews, especially um, from the era that Eminem came from because people wasn't doing interviews like today because it wasn't all these podcasts and YouTube shows and all that type of stuff. So he's come from a different era. Yeah, the the, the mystique is added by him Not being doing such it. an enigma. Yeah. You know what I mean? People just don't know and that was that helps in keeping them interested. Yeah. For, so why would he switch that up if it's been working for so long? Yeah, it's like some artists have to be always in your face and some artists do well just by not being in your face. Right. Um, and he's one of those. So even like Beyonce, Beyonce really don't do interviews because they keep that mystique about her. Yeah. Jay-Z really don't do interviews because they keep that mystique about him. Um, yeah. So I get it. When you see them, it's on tour. Yeah, facts. No, why won't he interact with people? Why won't he do interviews? Why would why is he so scared in twenty something years of his career to do interviews with black media? Mm. Why you think that is? Because he's scared. Because mm. he's scared, and he'll be exposed. Dang. It's easy to keep somebody quiet. Believe me, they know. Because one, once they open their mouths, that's it. That's who they are. It'll be easy to see. He'll expose himself. Obviously, but why? What, my thing is, why aren't you and every other person out here that has great, amazing platforms? Like, why ain't y'all saying, "Yo, it's fucked up"? Why ain't y'all complaining about it? Why don't y'all? Nobody's never says anything about him not being held to the fire like everybody else to do interviews. So that's all I'm saying, man. You gotta look at people. Gotta look at things. People look at things in a small box because that's what their phone is—a small box. Expand your mind. Go outside and just look in the air. Just <laughs> people need to go up outside, put the phone down for half an hour, and just look up and let your mind. Because your mind closes in when you're always looking at something so small. I also think it's because of, like we were saying before, when you see Eminem, it's something. It, it makes it a big deal. Yeah. Like you see Eminem at the uh, football Absolutely, game. Yeah. It was like, oh my god, Eminem was at the it, football game. It was a game. headline because he was, don't be out in the public yeah, like that. Yeah. Because the last time you seen him before watching such a big game. He was performing at one. Yeah. That was the Super Bowl with Dre and them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you really don't see him popping out like that. Yeah. And at this point, I don't know why it's such a, uh, one of those talking points almost. Like, yeah. why are you questioning, this is who he is. Based right. off what we've seen for this long a time, yeah. this is who he is. That's who he's been. Maul, look out to where you can't see anymore and just let your mind kind of breathe and expand. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But I want to backtrack, man. I want to backtrack to a comment you made earlier about him. You said that he don't make good music. And I know you and him, y'all going back and forth and y'all beefing. But I mean, you know, him, he got some heat in his catalog, man. Yeah, I mean, it got to be yeah. something in his catalog that you're a fan of, man. Right. So keeping it real, man, keeping what was the last real. project by him that you was a fan of? Honestly. I think the Tupac that he did with Pac was horrible. He said, yeah. He said, what do you like? He said, what do you like? And the only thing he can talk about is what he don't what like. What he don't like. I think that Tupac <laughs> he was horrible. It's crazy. Like, Honestly. I think the Tupac that he did with Pac was horrible. Mm. I think I think that album, I think that was a disgrace. Mm. I think he should have never had the fucking music to, Pac's lyrics to do it. I understand maybe at the time of Feeney, it was a, it was a money thing. He probably paid for that because that was the closest that he would be to Pac. Right. But that was another insult. 
on, on, on our culture and community, what he did to um, with that album. That was trash. I don't, I don't, maybe, uh, you know. Um, so you wasn't feeling the lawyer to the game album? That was, that was, that was, come on, man. That was not it. That was not it. What did you think? I mean, yeah, I mean, me being a big Pop fan, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that album. That wasn't it. And then you're talking Tupac, somebody who you love listening to over that. It's like he took Pac's lyrics and he put his beats and nah, nah. He should have never got the okay to play with Pac's voice like that uh, and his legacy. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they manipulated Pac's voice on that album, right? But when Timberland just did AI with Biggie, everybody shit on Timberland. <laughs> but nobody said nothing about Eminem. Wow. And this is this is what the fuck I'm talking about. This is the 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 this is the the lame ass shit that I'm talking about. The lame ass shit that I'm talking lame. about. <laughs> My ATL nigga. For real. But hey yo, you made a comment saying that, you know, Watch Five Nine, he be writing for him. Why you say that, yo? You Come on, that? of course. Like, if y'all think that all these studio sessions that Eminem was in, that Royce never wrote him nothing, that D12 never wrote him nothing. That all, like, stop, man. Like, what is the matter with people? Of course, of course he took some lines. He's not connected to our culture to know everything. So, of course, why not? Royce gave him some lines. It's part of hip hop. And when I wrote rap Elvis, when I said I was in the um, studio with a couple of guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, lines get passed all the time. I wrote probably 90, 97%. Like, come on, man. Like, hmm. I wrote 97% of that song. If he did, he on one. Yeah. If he, if he wrote 97% of that song, he on one. He, he on one. Then he's on one for real. Yeah. 90, 97%. Like, come on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, again, he's held to a different standard. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So it is true then. You got help with rap Elvis. It's not, that's not help. It's, I don't consider it help. <laughs> Like, and the one thing I will say about Benzino when asked about getting help for rap Elvis, he's never denied it. Yeah, since day one. He's never said, no, I didn't get any help. This was just me. He's made it very clear. Nah, me and the homies was in there. Yeah. I did most of the work, but they I, gave had, me some lines. I had some bars passed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he's never been like, nah, it was all me. Y'all yeah. tripping, y'all tripping. Yeah. So in that sense, man, he's been keeping it real. We just don't know how much help he was receiving. Yeah, 97 only got 3% ghostwriting. I thought it was a little bit more the other way. Like, yeah, he wrote was, 3%. Yeah, and somebody yeah, wrote the yeah. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The song's four and a half, you know what I'm saying, minutes. And if somebody got a line and I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there telling him what I got and he comes with something, that's like, what is that? Right. Man. Man. People don't want to give me my props because the shit was so dope, but I wrote it. Mm. I wrote Rap Elvis. I was in the studio. I wrote. I actually wrote Rap Elvis first before Votorious. You know, there's a couple of my guys was in there, which I was smoking, drinking, having a good time. You know what I mean? A couple of good lines sounded dope. I kept it, and that that was it. Nothing more than that. And and I was wow. truthful about it. It's Trey TV. Let's get it. Wilson here representing Ghetto Action News Network underscore. All our cases. No spaces. And you can find us on Facebook. When you do, just follow the page, like the page, share the page, and come back. All right, we're going to get into this. Uh, the Art of Dialogue. Right. Shout out to them. Uh, Benzino, again, is speaking about Rap Elvis. He said, yeah. I wrote 97% of that. What you talking about? Yeah. I had a little bit of help, but it wasn't like somebody made it for me and I'm yeah. just reciting words that was put down. That was my work. <laughs> right. And uh, I had to say since the beginning of this whole uh, thing where he threw the jab, I feel like Benzino been saying I had some help. Yeah. But it's just been a matter of how much help, or did yeah. he do it at all himself? And I've been hearing things in the streets. You know, the streets be talking. They said, oh, he had, they said he had some help. You know, yeah. what I mean, we even seen a little footage here and yeah, there. Yeah. But uh, I think it's still up for debate. But I, I will say it, it was a dope freestyle. You know, what I'm saying it was well put together. What you think about this? I think this was dope just to uh, come out just uh, today because yesterday we did the uh, Cliff Beats when they had a studio session mm -hmm. and the guy was saying there's reference tracks. Um, they the one that put the play together. Uh, Ness is the one that wrote it for him. And now he's saying 
That ain't true. I, I did 97% of this. Right. Um, now, I hear no uh, Ness nowhere name I'm in there. I don't know if they're friends or not, but I definitely didn't hear that name. It seemed like uh, Bazzino's uh, kind of telling the truth. So I want to know, is there a reference track? Did he write it? It's like the questions keep going up and up and more. Like, every yeah. time we think we know something, then we'll be like, ah, that's not... You know what Something I'm else you hear. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's always uh, like that. Um, but I'm going to keep following this as it go along. Um, and today, it's your boy Trey TV in the mouth.